Okay. Welcome to tonight's Team Zoom. I am so, so excited about tonight's Zoom. So on Sunday, we talked a little bit about social media and we talked about customers. <coughs> and so tonight, we're going to be talking about signing distributors. And we have a special guest on that I'm super excited. So Miss Stephanie is on here tonight. We, she posted, was it, I think, I'm going to mute you, Stephanie. Um, it was on, I believe, there you are. Hi. Okay. So yeah. Sunday night, right? I think, I think it was Sunday and she posted on, um, she posted on a group and where we were talking about conference and, um, we both, all of our spouses going, we were both talking about, um, the VIP elite ball. And we're like, we don't really want to go. We don't want to go by ourselves. And she posted on there, you guys. And, and she's like, does anybody want to go with me? And I was like, oh my gosh, God said, going with her. So it was super cool. Instantly we connected and we've been talking. About, <laughs> I'm excited to have her on here. Um, so Stephanie, will you go ahead and introduce yourself? Tell us when you got started, um, a little about maybe why you got started, and then we will jump right into our questions. All right. Hey, everyone. I'm really excited to be on here with you, and I'm super excited about my hot date for the ball, Allison. <laughs> um, so I am a presidential diamond. I am in Des Moines, Iowa. I'm not sure if there's any other Iowans on here, but um, we have a big Iowa team out here. And I, like, I don't know if I said this already, but I've been with the business for three and a half years. Is my mouth moving with my voice? Yeah. Okay, good. Yeah, you're good. My internet is horrible and it always like delays and I look weird. <laughs> so I'll try not to look at myself. <laughs> Anyways, I've been with uh, It Works for three and a half years now. Before I got started with It Works, I was a full-time personal trainer and health coach for a corporate wellness office here in Des Moines. And that's what I went to school for. Um, I absolutely loved what I did. I've always loved helping people get healthy. I love teaching your fitness classes, training people, um, coaching people on nutrition. So um, I always knew I wanted to stay in that field, but I was really, really miserable with my schedule. It was horrible. Sometimes I was there at four o'clock in the morning for my shift. And sometimes I was there till eight o'clock at night. So if there's any other trainers on here or anyone that works in a gym, you know that you have to work around everybody else's schedule. So my hours were absolutely horrible. Um, my husband pretty much worked opposite hours of me. So I never saw him and my, I had two kids at the time. I now have three. Um, but I was really, really struggling with dropping them off at daycare. I really hated that. And our hours were super weird for daycare. So it was really hard for us to keep a daycare provider that, um, we had to switch all the time because they kind of got annoyed with our schedules because they were so weird. Um, so, but anyways, I, was not looking for this opportunity at all. I really, really wanted to somehow make some extra money so I could possibly stay home with my kids, but I had no interest in sales whatsoever. None, none. Um, my friend that I uh, danced with in college, I was on my college dance team at the University of Iowa. Um, she started posting about that crazy rap thing and I instantly thought she was insane. As a trainer, it was everything that I was against I thought it was a water loss wrap. I just was immediately skeptical of it, but um, I honestly went to her website to make fun of the wrap. Um, and I was showing the other trainers at my, um, my office. And after I realized it wasn't what I thought it was and saw the other products, I was a little bit more intrigued. So I looked more into it and I, I still wasn't going to message her about it. But then she started messaging about making money from home. So, and it was just the simplest post. And this reminds me all the time that your posts don't have to be extravagant to get somebody's attention. The post literally said, sell one wrap, pay, put gas in your tank. Sell two wraps, pay your electric bill. Sell three wraps, blah, 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 blah. It was just was like selling four wraps. And I was like, oh, well, I could sell that many wraps. I'd love to just like, you know, cover a couple of bills a month. That would allow us to save some extra money and maybe possibly add a little money so that I could supplement some money to stay home. One second, I gotta let my dog out. He's driving me nuts. No, you're good. <laughs> I don't know if you guys could hear him, but he was whining next to me. Anyways, so that post was kind of what pushed me into messaging her. I messaged her, I think um, the next week there happened to be a one team, one mission in Des Moines, which there's been like four total since I've been a distributor 
So that was pretty crazy that the week after I messaged her, there was one team on mission. So I told her I'd go, even though I really had no intention of going with her because I was like, no, I'm not doing meetings. Are you kidding me? Nope, not doing that. Um, but she was my good friend, so I didn't want to make her feel bad. So I went with her to the meeting and I signed up on the spot. Um, I was still super skeptical, really scared about sales. I literally quit Girl Scouts in elementary school because I didn't want to sell the cookies because I was <laughs> terrified of sales. Uh, <laughs> and um, I hadn't tried any of the products. She put a wrap on me at the One Team One Mission, and that's all I had tried. But I was super, super interested in the greens. Um, so if you're talking to any trainers out there, you got to know the right products to hit them up with because, uh, you know, the greens, the Pro Fit at the time, now our new Shake, new you and thermal fit those are what really intrigued me into into just jumping in and joining the business and I just thought to myself the worst case scenario is I spend $99 on a box of products that I wanted to try anyways best case scenario I make some money um, I made my investment back right away by selling the wraps in my kit and then my goal was just to make a couple hundred extra dollars a month um, and I set this goal that I wanted to be making $500 a month by uh, my six month mark so um, and if I wasn't, I was planning on quitting. That was my big thing. I was like, if I'm not making $500 a month by my six month mark, I'm going to quit. Well, I wasn't making $500 a month by my six month. Um, but around my six month is when I really started to work the business like you're supposed to. I was enrolling loyal customers like crazy. I'm sure there's some of you on here that you seem to enroll loyal customers, no problem, but you just cannot seal the deal with the distributor. And that was me. My first six months, I think I had three distributors on my team and none of them really ever did anything. And then, um, so I signed up in July, January came around and they announced the good bonuses back. And it was at that time they'd set it up for three months. So you had January, February, and March. If you hit diamond in that time, you got the $10,000 good bonus. And so I really, really wanted that $10,000. Um, but I was an executive. I finally hit Ruby, I think in like my seventh month. And then I lost it the next month. And then I was up till March and March was the last month to get that bonus. And I was an executive and my upline Mackenzie Schultz, she made a post, another simple post. I guess these simple posts catch my eye, um, on our team page. And she just said, if you're not signing distributors, are you asking people? ask everybody. And I was like, I don't think I am. I think when people are messaging me about the products, I got them the products that they were interested in. And I never brought up the distributor option because I just thought if they were interested in being a distributor, they would have said so. But I was so wrong. So that month I was like, you know what? Um, I'm going to help my enroller. She's going for diamond. I'm going to help her get that $10,000 bonus. And I'm going to go for emerald, but I'm going to shoot for diamond. Okay. Now I have to let the dog back in. Oh. <laughs> at least it's not my kids it's my dogs this time <laughs> the kids are asleep so anyway so that month March I had like four distributors on my team total five I think because I had gone Ruby five distributors um, and I ended up enrolling I think 14 distributors that month and I went diamond so I jumped from executive to diamond in that month so when you're setting yourself up for goals, I always tell people to shoot big. If you want diamond that month, there is no reason that you cannot go from executive or distributor all the way to diamond in one month. The only thing I changed that month, the only thing I changed was I was asking everyone. If they messaged me and they asked me about the wraps or uh, confianza, I always threw out the option of being a distributor. I would just go into it like, hey, this is totally random, but... I have to throw it out there. Would you ever be interested in enrolling as a distributor? It'd be a great way that you could cover the cost of the products that you want to try by just making a little extra income. And most of the time they said, yeah, actually I was kind of interested or can you send me some more information? So, um, I literally just asked everybody. I uh, had to step out of my comfort zone and at parties, I I'm, I'm really good at like being brave on the computer, but I'm not as brave in person. Like I know how to get the sale on the computer, but in person, I'm like, oh, you don't want to buy it? Okay. Have a nice life. Bye. <laughs> so I, I was doing lots of parties because I'm not a shy person. I'm just not a, I'm not a salesperson. I'm just really not. 
Um, so in person, that's still, that's still uncomfortable to me. Even as a presidential diamond, it's still uncomfortable for me to try to make a sale in person. But at parties, I, I love doing the party presentation, but the closing of the deal at the end was uncomfortable for me. So that month, I did a ton of parties. Um, I launched all of those new distributors that I was enrolling. That's really important because that's another great way that you can continue to get distributors after you enroll that first distributor, launch them in their first week. You might get a distributor or two at their launch. When you're on fire and you're excited, people are going to want to join you. Um, so I, I tried really hard that month to, whenever I did a party, that I definitely went through the distributor side of the party pad because I was so holding myself back that I wasn't even doing the distributor side of the party pad presentation at my parties. <laughs> you got to do it. You just got to say, even if you're looking at that crowd and you're thinking, none of these people are going to want to be a distributor. The people that I thought, no way in heck are they going to want to be a distributor are the ones that said yes. So don't make that decision for people. You got to leave it to them to make that decision. Don't prejudge someone because sometimes the people you think uh, wouldn't ever be good or wouldn't want to do it are end up being your best distributors. Amen to that. So, I rambled. That was no, that was, that was perfect. And I'm like going through all my questions. I'm like, check, check. check. <laughs> perfect. So, um, that was awesome. So I wrote down a couple things that I'm going to just kind of, and I'm always all over the place. So, um, with questions. So a couple things that like sparked my, um, bring your talking was, okay, so you, you have a personal training background and you know, you're in the fitness industry. And I think as what we do for a living, you know, as a health and wellness coach or distributor, or whatever you want to call it, I think it's one of the most intimidating things is to talk to, coaches, trainers, people that are fit, people that are in shape and healthy. And um, I know when I first got started that if I was scrolling through Facebook and I saw someone that was healthy or fit or in shape, I was like, nope, scroll past. Nope, nope, nope. You know, and you don't even think twice to even ask, but those are the ones that want it. And so I want to know for you, so for some tips for everybody, what would you say is the, probably the best route to go as to approaching someone in the fitness industry? Well, um, especially for a new person, I would, um, you know, say something like, I really value your opinion in the health and fitness industry, or I know that you're super into fitness. Would you mind looking at some of these products and just giving me your honest opinion on what you think about them? So this works really well for someone who's brand new because you want their opinion. You want to know from someone who's in the health and fitness industry, what they think about these, um, these products. And, um, if you are talking to someone who you are trying to get interested in being a distributor or being a customer that is a trainer or, um, or just a health professional, a wellness coach, a nutritionist, or something like that, most times they're probably going to want to read the ingredients. So that's the times where the, um, the product sheets that you can get off the e-suite, that's when those come in handy. I have those all saved on my computer because I like to know exactly what the ingredients are and what the, like, the carbs, the calories, the protein, or whatever it is in them, those are the things that interest someone who's a trainer. They want to know all of those facts. Um, so I would say these are the products that, you know, my, the other people that are in the industry that are trainers um, really like. Would you like some information on them? So that's ThermoFit. New you. If you're talking to a guy, my husband is also a trainer, FYI. Well, he's not really a trainer anymore. He owns a sports facility, but he, that's his background too. And he loves new you and he loves relief and he loves the greens. And uh, those, you got to know the products that are for those kind of people. So if you are talking to a guy, most times, okay, I don't want to like pigeonhole the guys, but some of them are interested in their apps, but more likely they're going to be more intrigued by something like new you and relief, especially if they're lifting weights. I think relief gets looked over a lot by um, the younger crowd and anyone who's in the fitness field relief is huge because your body hurts when you lift weights <laughs> or if you're in sports. Did I even answer uh, the question? You know what? Something that I just thought about as you were talking to is that we do have a couple of guys on here tonight. And I know for me, when I first got started as well, you know, it was such a, okay, guys didn't really, really want to approach girls a whole lot and girls didn't really want to approach guys a whole lot. And I know for me, what I train is you approach a guy and a girl the exact same way, and then you find out the goal. You know, what is your goal? Yep. What are you trying to achieve on these products, or what are you trying to get out of this company? But do you train anything different on that, Stephanie, of how you have talking to a guy distributor versus a girl distributor? Because 
I know some people are kind of like, uh, I don't really, you know, I don't want to cross paths, especially if that woman is married or I don't want to talk to that guy because of his wife, you know, do you have, how do you kind of cross that? Okay. So funny thing, the month that I went presidential, I discovered that I wasn't, I was never talking to any guys about the products. And I was like, why the heck am I doing this? My husband uses half of the product line every day. So I know guys like the products. So I started cold messaging guys and you guys, you have to start messaging men because they are so straightforward. They will just say yes or no, or they will ask a question. They don't like, they don't do any of the in between stuff that I could admit it, that the women do. Mm -hmm. they, they literally will just say no. And so I was just messaging men and I made a little thing and I can, um, I can send it to you, Allison, if you want. I just made a little list of little packages of the products that I thought would be good for men. And I said, Hey, you know, I'm looking for some more ma male testimonials for my products. Um, would you be willing to try them for 90 days and, um, just give me your feedback. So I have some more male testimonials to use. These are the products I'm interested in, um, getting tested. I'll, I'll send you that. Yeah, I would love and it. it. Um, yeah. And it got, I got, that month, I think I signed more male loyal customers than, than female. And I don't think I signed any male loyal customers before that. So um, it just goes to show you have to ask everybody. Yeah. Um, never prejudging anyone. So you kind of talked a little bit about, um, you know, it was your, kind of your six to seven month mark when things started to shift. Um, but then that's where you started taking things seriously. So when you decided that, um, I know we kind of talked earlier, but you know, my team knows that it took me about 14 months to even go from Ruby to Emerald, you know, slower start. So, and that's when we were talking about that, you know, you took it seriously. And then when, when you fully decide you're going to take this business seriously or when things happen and things start to shift and things start to move and people start to take you seriously as well as a business owner. So for you, you started taking things seriously. Things started to happen about your seven month mark. So where did you start finding your distributors? Was it social media, face-to-face? -face? Where did you start finding people? Yeah, so a few different places. The month that I really took off and actually started enrolling a good amount of distributors, that month I went in Diamond, um, I got some of them. I started messaging the people who were my loyal customers that were ordering. Um, back then when I was enrolling so many loyal customers, I was really good at, um, you know, good customer service with my customers. So they were, lots of them were continuing to order. So if I, if I noticed that they had ordered for more than three months, I was messaging them and asking them if um, going the distributor route was something that they were interested in. So that's how I got a handful of them. Um, and then from social media for my post, because even though I was not like uh, doing it as gung ho as I was after the seven month mark, those first seven months I was consistently posting every day. That was one thing I I did for my business and I think that really paid off when I did start doing the other things because I had planted all those seeds. Um, so a lot of those seeds started to grow after those months of posting. So one thing I will tell you, if you're posting and you're not getting a lot of feedback from your posts, because I had that the last few months, the last like three months, I never stopped posting, but I was not getting any feedback from my posts. Like that's been the first time in three years that I was like just dead from any thing. But all of a sudden this month, all of these random people are messaging me and it's from all of those new friends that I added over the last three months and from all of those posts that I've been consistently doing over those three months. So be consistent. Eventually it will pay off. Everybody's flourish at a different rate. It could be after one month of consistently posting. It could be after a couple of months. It could be after a few days. It just depends on your crowd, but people want to know that you're truly invested in the business before they jump on board with you. They want to know it's not just a little Blank. So if you do it for one week and you don't get any messages and you quit, then guess what? They're, those seeds are never going to grow because people are just like, yeah, she quit. Must have sucked. Yeah. And then, and then the other thing was parties. I told, like I said before, I was launching everybody in person. I pretty much made it a requirement that they had to do a in-person launch party. Back then I was really only signing local distributors. So I was able to launch pretty much everybody in person. We weren't even doing virtual parties and that was not a thing. So um, I was launching every single person in person. I think every single one of those people got their four little customers at their launch party and most of them got at least one distributor. Um, because like I said, I went outside my box and I was finally doing the distributor side of the party pad. So I got, I would say I got half of my distributors on parties that month. Awesome. Um, my next thing is talking about, you talked a lot about those simple posts and I don't think we talk about that enough. You know, I don't think we talk about how much that 
one sentence or two sentence uh, post goes a long way. And not just one time or once a day for one week or two weeks, it's that consistent, like you were talking about, day after day, simple simplicity. So can you give some examples of what simple posts catch potential distributors' eyes? I think different things are going to are going to reach with different people. So a lot of the things I hear from my new distributors are, well, I can't, you know, post about this change in my life because I just started and it hasn't done anything for my life yet. But so I always tell them post about what this is going to do for you and why you're doing it. Post about your why all the time. People want to support you when they hear why you are doing this business. So I think the most important thing with posts and I think social media has um, really changed since I started in the business. There's all these rules it seems now, but I think if you are just authentic and you're real about your posts and you're not like, I'm a millionaire from it works. I've only been doing this for one week. People are not going to believe that, <laughs> but I, you know, <laughs> I want, you know, example, you know, I have three babies and I want nothing more than to have more freedom of time with them. And I am just staring at this mountain of student loan debt and I am going to do something about it. So I started my own wellness business and this is going to help me get to where I want to be in my life. And I would love everyone's support. Thank you. Blah, blah, blah. So just stuff like that. And, um, I also encourage my team to post a lot about like you get your first paycheck from it works and it's $40. Let's say. That's not a ton of money, but guys, that's $40 more than you had before. And tell people what you're doing with that $40. Like, got my first It Works paycheck. I was able to fill up my tank with gas. More people out there are going to be able to relate with just being able to fill up one tank of gas with that extra money than, oh, I paid my mortgage and I bought a uh, vacation home. You know, people think that you, people are not going to respond to to um, posts other than from people who are high up because they're doing crazy big things with their life. But honestly, I think the posts that get the most feedback and that you can relate to the most are the little things like putting gas in your tank or I was able to uh, make an extra payment on my student loans this month with my It Works pay. Stuff like that. Just little things that other people can relate to. Just keep it so real and um, be you. Just be you. Tell your story. Tell your why. That's going to get you the most results with your posts. Yeah, something that I taught from that too is just being able to relate. And that's something that for me is when I look at posts, I want to be able to be like, okay, she's no different than me. You know, mm -hmm. regardless of, yeah, she might be successful, but she's talking the smaller things right now. And I need to pay off that electric bill or buy that pack of diapers or fill up my tank of gas. And like you said, posting posts that people can relate to. And mm -hmm. I didn't even, you know, I was, when I was, I think I learned this from Jocelyn Yates, I want to say, but she was talking about how every post should be in the category of, are you looking for an extra 300 to $500 or the small expenses? Because nobody believes that you're making thousands or successful in this business and nobody cares. Nobody mm -hmm. cares. They want to know that if they get in, they can make that extra $500 a month, that extra $400 a month. And 76% of Americans are silently struggling in that 300 to $500 range. If they could just have that little bit of extra umph every month, they would be okay. So I love that you were saying that, just being able to relate and have, you know, share your struggle before sharing your success because people will be able to relate to that first before your success because you share that success and they're like, no, I can't do that. So um, I love that. So my next thing is a little bit about messaging. And I think this is something that's super intimidating for a lot of people, even if you're just beginning or you've been in three years, you know, for us, because there's sometimes where I sit there and I'm like, oh my God, what do I even want to say to her? You know, and then I, now I'll pick up the voice message is what I usually do now, but I want to know what you do. So give me an example of what you would say to somebody of completely random, you've added them, you've followed them, and then somebody that likes your post, because I know you can kind of go two different routes with that. Um, so let's start off with somebody that likes your post. Um, what would you message them? If someone likes my post, first of all, always write their name down on your list right away, because I am one that'll be like, oh, they liked my post. I, I'll remember to message them later. No. I never do. So make sure you write their name down right away because I don't like to message, like as soon as the like pops up, I don't like to message them right away because I don't want to look like a crazy, like I'm stuck in my Facebook, ready to pounce on everyone. Um, but well, you know, within a few hours or the next day or something, I'll message them and I'll just say something like, hey, thanks for the love on my post. It's for like the cleanse. 
is the cleanse something that you're interested in trying or if it's a distributor post hey thanks for loving my post um about being a distributor or about blah 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 is that something that you're interested in? i keep it super short and simple and most times if you just keep it short just like one or two sentences they'll at least respond and say yes or no or sometimes i get a lot of people that just say nope just just proud of your hard work or something like that most times they're nice i've had a few mean ones in my day but if they're liking your post then <laughs> they either like you or like what you said <laughs> and sometimes they're another network marketer that they agree with what you're saying about the business but just keep it super simple okay so and i do the exact same thing i, I do the exact same thing to level my post so i think that route is i feel like that's so easy to coach somebody and train somebody and help somebody it's the other route where it's the random message i've been facebook friends with you and i need to message you but i don't know what to say so you added on say you added me on friday and i'm posting you're like i really want you on my team i don't know what to say what would be a sample message or something that you would send to me okay so this is what i always say <laughs> i always say if i see someone and i see that they you know they make really good posts or they're just even really good at like editing pictures because i think pictures and taking quality pictures and being artistic about it i guess is like a really great quality to have for someone who's in this kind of a business so I just kind of look at what qualities it is that I'm noticing that I think that why I think they would be a good distributor and I'll message them and say, Hey, this is completely random. I normally don't do this, but your name keeps popping up in my head and your name keeps coming across my news feed. And I really think that you would be a good fit for this business because you're super outgoing and bubbly. Your pictures are amazing and you just look like you would be so much fun or so, you know whatever it is that you're noticing about their profile or about them or if you know them they, you can obviously say things that you know about their personality that why there's obviously a reason why you want to message them and why you think that they would be good at this so tell them why because they want to know why you think they don't want to think that you're just messaging everyone and telling them that you think that they would be good at this business so don't just go through your friends list and message everybody and tell them that you think they'd be good at this business and definitely don't message them all the same message. Try to make it personal and fit that person and they're much more likely to respond, at least with, uh, no, I'm not interested. And then you can turn that into, well, have you ever tried any of the products? I always ask that at the end if they're not interested in being a distributor. So if, if not a distributor, maybe you can get a customer out of, the, out of the message. And if they say no, keep them on your hundreds list um, because now at least you put the seed, planted the seed out there, um, and you can, you know, keep interacting with their posts so they don't forget about you. So their your posts keep popping up on their newsfeed. Yeah, I love that. You know, something that I, the keyword that I got there from what you said, you know, is you'd be a good fit for this business because, mm -hmm. and I think that little because goes a long way, you know, because I know for me, when I'm caught up in messaging, I'm like, I think you're really good at what I do. I want you on my team but I never tell them why in the beginning, you know? And I like that, how you said that compliment them, add in that little bit of a compliment. And I think that'll go a long way because they're like, oh my God, Stephanie's thinking of me, awesome. Okay, why? <laughs> you know, or I'm good at this, or I'm good at that, or, you know, I can do this too, I'm no different than her. So I love that, it's adding in that simple compliment. Um, okay, my next one is, do you look for, like, when you're looking to add people on Facebook, like, where do you go? Because I get this all the time. Where do you, where do you find these people to message? So, um, you know, are you looking for certain qualities? Are you typing in certain groups? Are you adding friends of friends, friends of loyal customers? Like, where do you find your people to add? Uh, okay, so I do a couple different things. Um, I've started a few different groups myself. Like, I started a neighborhood group that has like expanded into a few other neighborhoods in my, in my town. I started a, um, mom, a DCG moms group, which that's my school district DCG. Um, and it just like connected me with all of the moms. So cause all of the moms kept adding more and more moms. Um, and I just do like, I make sure that I always am super interactive in the groups that I'm in. I don't like make a group and then immediately add everybody or I don't join a group and immediately start adding everyone. I interact on the posts and then the people that I'm interacting with, then I'll add them as a friend because then they've seen my, seen my name and recognize. So they don't think I'm just like a random ad. So that's how I do it with the groups. And then I, um, so I'll go to my recently added friends on Facebook and I always add the recently added friends to my 100s list. So I think my 100s list is more like a thousands list by now, but <laughs> um, I add those names on there and then I'll set like whenever I sit down to work. So like this is my, 
I don't know if you guys have seen these High Achievers playbooks. I just got it this year and I'm kind of obsessed. So when I sit down, I don't know if you guys can see this, but whenever I sit down before I actually start working, which this is a new thing I just started in January, I make a list of the things that I'm going to do during that work time. So if I have an hour, I'll make a list of you know five or six things that I want to get done first before I do anything else. Um, so I know that I'm productive and I don't scroll on Facebook because I have a problem with that. <laughs> but one of the things I always have on there is 10 Facebook interactions. So I will go um, to my 100s list. I will go to the next 10 names and I will interact with something on their page. And then I will go to their friends. And if we have a, any friends that have just like a few friends in common, I add a, a handful of those from their friends list. So I'm like continuing to branch out because I'm always adding those mutually or those recently added friends to my list. I just like rambled, so I hope you guys caught that. So I'll say it again. I go to my recently added friends. I add them to my 100s list. If you, if you guys don't know where that is, if you go to your friends list, it'll have like your, it'll just have different categories for your friends list and one is recently added. Um, so any of your friends that you've recently, have recently accepted your friend request, I add those to my 100s list and then at least 10 at a time. Sometimes I'll just sit down and do more, but 10 at a time, I'll go through and I'll interact with them and I will add some friends from their friends list that we have a couple friends in common, not a ton. And I always make sure I look at what friends in common we have because if they're another it works person, I won't add them because I don't want to take somebody else's potential or have them bombarded with it works posts. So that's how I add friends and that way has really, really worked for me with the kind of just hand, taking a handful from each of my new friends. Then it just kind of continues to build your branch out further. Mm -hmm. It works. Yeah. I love that. Um, really quick before I finish off with the last question, I'm going to ask you if any of you, anybody has anything that they want to ask Stephanie, feel free to either unmute yourself or put it in the chat um, and we can um, go over your questions. Or oh, anything. someone did ask. Someone asked what was the name of the, the organizer. Oh, your planner. Yeah. She said, that's a green's dream. I am, I am part green. Um, it's the high achievers playbook. I'll type it in here guys. High achievers playbook. And I, it's big. And it has lots of space for you to write goals and it's amazing. I'm obsessed. I think I'm, I like want to cuddle it and sleep with it at nighttime. <laughs> Where did you, you buy that? Did you buy it on Amazon? You guys, it's for, it's specifically for network marketers. It's called high achievers playbook for the network marketing professional. It comes with this inside of it. This is your master prospect list. So it has Basically, for your 100s list or your new potentials. You just saved my life. Yeah, it comes in the folder in there. It's amazing. You should see, I was just telling um, some of my leaders yesterday how unorganized my leads are right now. I don't even want to show my team because it's kind of embarrassing. They're everywhere. They're everywhere. And even last night, I stayed up late and I was like, okay, I'm going to stay up late, put your phone down, you're done following up, you're going to organize these leads really quick. And it didn't happen. So now that you just did that, that's like totally like, okay, I have to order that and it's going to happen. So it's awesome. Thank you. For sure. um, okay. So, um, okay. We just had one more. Okay. I'm going to ask this for actually really quick and then I'll go to the question. So my, my last thing that I kind of want to go over, because I don't think people realize how crucial this is, is that when you take this seriously, people are going to start taking you seriously and people are going to want to be drawn to you and join your team. And as you talked about consistency and as you talked about simplicity of post and posting is posting, posting is not asking. And I can't say that enough. People are not going to come to you all the time. You've got to reach out and ask them, you know. I'm looking to, you know, add somebody new to my team. Would I think you'd be great at what I do? And you know, you've got to reach out and ask. So, when what would you say? Maybe a couple tips of helping somebody who's like right there, borderline of like getting it and quitting. And what would you say? Like maybe a tip or a suggestion or something to just tell them to like, hey, you got to take this seriously if you want to go anywhere in this business. You want to move forward. You want to be successful, and you want people to actually be drawn to you, inspired by you you know, see your confidence, your passion, whatever, what would you suggest? Okay. So I have to read this quote because I just read it to my team and it's perfect for this. Uh, I am obsessed with listening. I, I don't like to read because then I can't multitask. I like to listen to audiobooks. <laughs> I am like massive ADD, OCD, all the D's. <laughs> um, and so I like to listen to audiobooks. So one of my favorites that I've listened to is The Miracle Morning. 
Um, and this one is the Miracle Morning for Network Marketers. And it is basically teaches you how to make the most of your day, but it specifically teaches you how to start your day off right in the morning, basically getting up an hour earlier and doing stuff then. This is way off topic, but this is where I got the quote from, so I had to say that. All right, the quote is, the moment you take responsibility for everything in your life is the moment you can change anything in your life. Boom. The moment you take responsibility for everything in your life is the moment you can change anything in your life. And I love that for this business because a lot of times I think that people think, well, you know, I'm not successful because I do not have a very supportive upline or everybody I enroll as a distributor is horrible and they just don't do anything. So how can I ever promote if they're not contributing anything? You cannot think that way. You have to think that it's all on you. When you look at your diamond, when I look at a chart and I'm, let's say I'm going for diamond and I know that I, my chart needs 10 more distributors for it. I'm not looking at it like my team needs to enroll 10 more distributors. I'm looking at, I need to enroll 10 more distributors. I'm looking at that this is all my responsibility. If I lose a rank or I'm not promoting as fast as I want to, it's because of what I'm doing or what I'm not doing. It's not because of what my team is doing or not doing because you are leading your team by example. So if you are just putting that negativity out into the universe and you are saying, my team sucks at enrolling, I suck at enrolling. I'm good at signing loyal customers, but I'm really bad at signing distributors. That is going to be continuing in your life on and on and on and on. You've got to put it out there in your mind and out into the world that you are a mass enroller. You are an ambassador diamond. You are whatever that you want to be, but it's all on you. Your success comes from you, not from anybody else. Not your upline, not your downline, not your sidelines, nothing. Because honestly, when I got started, my enroller signed up the week before I did, maybe two weeks. And her enroller is Mackenzie Schultz, who was already a presidential diamond at the time. So I was self-taught. That's why I, I, I had 50 loyal customers under me without distributors because I just I didn't really know what I was doing. But I figured it out. So you do not need an upline that's coaching you or giving you things. I never got given a loyal customer or distributor from day one. Never have. And I'm pretty sure that I never will. So, again, <laughs> so um, if you are, or, uh, you know, I've even had people like, well, I heard that you gave blah, 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 a loyal customer. That's why she's promoting so fast. If you want help, then you, take action and show that you are someone who is worth helping. That sounds kind of like brutal, but it's true. Like we want to help the people that are, are showing that they're totally invested in this. You don't have to be a rock star and roller to deserve help. You're if you are, if you're trying every day and you're being consistent, you're going to get help and you're going to get coached and, and your good things are going to come to you. You just got to put it in the universe. You got to look at yourself in the mirror every day and say, I am an ambassador diamond and it will happen. Yeah, I can't agree with that more enough because I don't, I've heard that so much. It's, you know, a lot of people are like, well, this person's not building here. This person's not signing this and that. It's like, you have to take full responsibility and ownership for your business, you know, and I've never been a big recruiter, you guys, ever. And it's not about that. It's about leading from the front with your day-to-day -day consistent action. And when you take this business seriously, people are going to take you seriously. And if you're not signing distributors, are you asking? That's the other thing, you know, is it all comes down to, are you simply asking? Because we can sign loyal customers all day, every day, right? It's easy. I mean, you can present a product. Do you want to do it? This is the cost. Okay, I'll get you in. You know, it's super simple. It's distributors. It's more of the skepticism of like, oh, I'm not really sure. We're getting money involved here. And, you know, you've got to be able to relate to them and tell them that, hey, I'm here for you. Because when you join this business, it's no longer about you. It's about finding those people that want a better life that want more options that want to get healthy right so i love that you said that you know as soon as you take this business seriously is when things are going to start to happen um okay natalie really quick said can you repeat what you said to random people you think would be great on your team i say i always start with hey this is completely random but your name keeps coming across my newsfeed or your name keeps popping up in my mind something like that um and I just really think you'd be a great fit for this business. This is why, because list some things of reason why. I love it. Um, when someone asks, what do you do? What do you say to them? 
Oh, I, um, I tell them that I work from home and I do direct sales. And then I, I'm obviously, I tell them it, I'm with it works. Lots of times I'm wearing, you know, a network shirt. So they, they know what company it is. <laughs> oh, you're a brand of the brand. Really? <laughs> oh, funny. Okay. Uh, I have heard that some people say, which I should probably start saying this, or I run a, I run a successful business from home. So that they definitely want to ask you, oh, what's your business? Just by throwing that successful in there. <laughs> I like that. Adding that little part in. Anybody else have any other questions, comments? Stephanie, do you have any other thing you want to add in? We do have, we're going to end with, um, I have about 20 more minutes of just little tips and tricks to that I'll share with you guys. Um, let's see here. Do you bring up the startup cost at the beginning of the conversation? Um, it depends on how the conversation got started. Um, I always, I talk to a lot of people for my business page and surprisingly, most of them don't know what it works is. So I always explain my little quick description of what it works is. And then I ask them if they have time to watch a video and I have a seven minute video that I made. So if you don't have one, you should make one and it's just an opportunity video. And I quickly in that explain the main products that I explain, like the wraps and the greens, and I explain what it takes to start up. So I do bring up the $99 in there. So I at, first I ask them if they have time to watch a seven minute video that explains more about the company and a little bit of my story. And if they say yes, then I send it to them and then I check in and ask them what they thought and what questions they have. Sometimes people watch that and if it was the $99, if that's the thing that's not going to have them sign up, sometimes they just don't respond. Honestly, you know that most people don't respond to after their first message. Um, but at least it puts the $99 out there and it gets them all the other information without sending a, a book of a paragraph. Instead, they can watch a video. They see my face. They see me talking in my kitchen and it, it's more real to them. You're human. You're a real person. Um, let's see here. The next one is what about saying I run a health and wellness company from home? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I would definitely say that. A lot. I'm a health and wellness coach. I work from the phone. I work from anywhere. I work from home. Um, personally, how often do you spend time and energy on a potential distributor that is scared to pull the trigger? Mm. Um, if, you know, if, the, if they're just not going for it after the, after messages, I'll give them a break, but I always leave them on my list, um, especially on my hundred list, so I remember to interact with them. Um, but I, I just address what their fears are, and the biggest thing is make sure that their fear is relatable. So most of the things are, I don't have the money, I don't have time, um, I'm not a salesperson. What's it? There's another one. I don't know if enough people. So um, I have like a written out response for each of those and then I change it to fit them. But um, I address that and you address it like, oh, I have the same fear or, and this is what I found. So um, Mackenzie Schultz, she teaches us feel, felt, found. So, oh, I know how you feel. I felt the same way when I got started or before I got started. But what I found was, oh, feel, felt, found. I feel the same way. I felt the same way before I got started or I know how you feel. I felt the same way before I got started. And what I found is, so if it's, I don't have the $99 example, I would say, Oh, I know how you feel. I felt the same way when I got started. I did not have a lot of extra money laying around, but what I found was that it was totally worth the investment because I could make the money back with it selling my wraps. And I found that we are willing to spend money on the things that are important to us. And this could be life changing. So if you didn't have $99 last month, how is that going to change for this month and next month and the following month if you don't make a change? I love that. The three S. <laughs> That's good. Miss McKenzie. I love that. No felt found. I love it. I just wrote that down. Um, something to add on to that really quick are three things that I always say is how much per month do you want to be making with it works? So after you get the conversation started, asking them how much they want to make. The second thing is if they're like, well, I want to make $500, I will say, okay. And if they're still on the edge is, okay, well, what's the worst thing that could happen if you join? What's the worst thing? And they're like, well, no one signs. People say no. Um, I lose my $99. Like they'll start thinking 
And then the third thing I ask is what's the best thing that could happen if you join? Because people join based upon feelings, right? People join based upon that emotion and feelings. And if they can get that emotion out of what's the worst thing that can happen, and then they can get the emotion in of what's the best thing that can happen, you're more apt to walk them through that process. So um, I love that. I'm going to incorporate that feel felt. I love that. Um, anybody else have any other um, questions? Feedback or Stephanie, you want to add any last tips about signing distributors? Just ask, ask everyone. It's the biggest thing that changed for me. It sounds so simple and so duh, but that's what changed for me. And just stick with it. If you are signing distributors and they are quitting or they're not doing anything, just find another one. Keep finding another one because eventually you're going to keep flipping those cards and eventually you're going to turn over that ace that will change your business. So just do it. Ah, I love it. Oh, I'm so grateful for you. Thank you so, so much. Welcome. I post on Sunday and connecting and now pouring into my team. I appreciate it. And I know everyone on here does as well. Um, this is again recorded, you guys. So I will post on the team page. Um, thank you, Stephanie, again, very, very much. Yep. Um, nice. And so what we're going to do now, you guys, is we're going to just finish up with a couple, um, couple more tips and tricks to sign. Um, Stephanie's getting up, she's such a rock star, you guys. She's getting up at like five o'clock in the morning for something and still committed to being on and it's almost 10 o'clock her time. So um, those of you that wanna stay on for the next 20 minutes, you're more than welcome to or you can hop off, but I'm gonna go through, I have about um, two or three pages of tips and things for signing distributors as well. So, um, okay, I'm gonna roll right into this. So any questions you might have, put it in the chat. So. Number one, you have to realize that people will contact you and message you if they trust you. So um, when you're looking and taking a look at your posts, are they a post that if you would read it, would you join yourself? Um, when you're posting, are you confident? Um, and are you passionate? Are you excited? Can people feel and experience your energy through those posts? Um, number two, you've got to realize that it's not up to you if when people join, if they work this or not. Um, it's up to you to deliver that message. It's up to you to ask them to be a part of your team. It's up to you um, to deliver what you need to, but not give them information that they're not asking for, right? Um, but I simply explain to them, you know, like Stephanie was saying, what it is, what you do, how much it is, and then seal the deal. Um, let's see here. In your post, making sure that they are inspired by you, that they want to work with you, that they can connect with you. So always finding something that they can relate to. So every time you post, are you relating to a certain market, a certain person, a certain potential, a certain hater, somebody always being related to somebody. Um, okay. When you're reading your posts, I want you guys to think, um, these three things from now on is why would you join? Um, what's, and the next thing is what is, so what's the why behind it? Why would somebody want to join you? Um, and then is it real, raw, and relatable? So think about those things, real, raw, and relatable. So not just the copy and paste, or I found this and I'm going to post it because if I was looking back and I was terrible, terrible at social media, terrible, oh my gosh, so embarrassing, but I'm getting better and better and I know that just because I'm trying to train my brain to be real, the raw, and not the quick and easy way out, right? Because I found when I get lazy with posts, it doesn't do anything, right? Nobody is interacting. People look at you like you're a, an advertisement. So every time you're posting, tell a story. Tell a story. So this is what it did when I first joined. This is what it's doing now. This is where I've been. This is where I'm going. This is what my rap cast just bought. You know, I'm wanting that mom that is sick and tired of being sick and tired or that dad is overworked and underpaid. Tell a story with every single post that you post. Um, when you tell a story, people start to feel something. They start to feel that connection. They start to feel that belief. They start to feel that energy. And again, like we talked about, people join based upon feelings and emotions. Um, so sharing the struggle before the success and the little success before the big. So relating that wrap cash, that $100 weekly bonus, that $50 grocery bill, that $50 filling at the tank, um, kids, school supplies, whatever it is, you guys, that little thing. And like I was telling you that 76% of Americans are typically struggling for that next three, three to $500 and they won't tell you. 
and they won't post about it, most of them. So you've just got to be able to relate to that certain um, community of people um, and then deliver the message. So let's see here. Um, the next three things that Jocelyn Yates, I got this from her and this is pretty cool. So when people are messaging you, um, and they're wanting to know, you know, what, it, what is it about and what do you do? And this type of thing is, um, she says she delivers these three things as number one, she talks about we're the only one with the body wrap. Um, and it's a supply and demand thing about you can't buy our products from a GNC. You know, you can only supply them through a distributor. And so that's job security for us. So really making sure that they know that if you get into this company, into this business, you won't be able to go to Walmart and purchase that. That is the beauty of It Works Global, you guys, is that you cannot go buy our body wrap or thermogenic. Yeah, you're going to have comparable products in all areas, but you can't buy our certain product anywhere. Okay. Um, number two is we don't, or It Works Global does not pay for advertisements um, for their company. We get paid to advertise for our company. Our, our company pays us to be successful. Okay. And that's something huge that a lot of companies don't do is they pay to be on TV. And I get this, I don't know about you guys, but I get this a lot is, well, why are you guys on TV? And why aren't you guys in this? Why aren't you guys in that? Because Mark would rather spend his money to us, getting us out of debt, putting more money in our bank than in theirs. Okay. Because when we make money, Mark makes money. He's not putting the money in the advertisement. So getting that message across that we get paid to advertise our products and our opportunity. Okay. And number three is that there are only 140,000 paid distributors worldwide letting them know that they're starting from a ground floor opportunity and up. A lot of other companies have millions of people. We have 140,000 paid distributors and this is just the beginning, just the beginning. Um, again, keeping things simple as possible. Don't answer questions that aren't asked. Um, and then when somebody, I love this is, you know, when somebody says, well, how do I join is sending them, like clipping off, sending them a picture of just the first part of the steps to success and saying, this is it. It's $99. This is what all comes in your kit. Does this sound like something that may work for you? I'm a visual person. And so if somebody sent me just that tiny little clip, not the whole steps to success, cutting off just that first step one, it helps people that are visual, but then it helps people see like straight to the point, this is what it is. And then you don't sometimes have to cut out that confusion of trying to explain yourself. Um, and the next one a lot of people ask is, okay, how do I get paid? We get paid on wrap cash, we get paid on fast start bonuses, and we make commissions anywhere from two to 15% on customers and distributors. This is a huge, huge, huge shortcut that I've learned. When you're talking to a potential distributor and they ask, okay, well, what are your levels of earning? And you tell them, <laughs> Five, five, two, two, or <laughs> see, I couldn't even do it. Five, five, 10, 10, 10, 2% infinity. Then you make 15%. Like that's just doesn't even make sense. Don't even talk about it. Don't even talk about it. Right. Okay. So if you're trying to explain the 10, 10, five, 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 2% to infinity, they're like, what's infinity? What's the five, five, what's the 10, what's all that cutting all of that out, talking about the levels and just saying we make commissions on our low customers and distributors anywhere from 2% to 15%. If you're talking to a red, they're going to want to know how you make money. So you want to make sure you know that. You don't have to know the whole compensation plan. It's the little tidbits that are going to help you. Putting those in like your notepads or on wherever you put your information for follow-up messaging, just a little tidbits. Um, and then letting them know. And then once you go to certain leadership levels, you start making more money as well. The next one, I don't have $99 to get started. I think all of us get this at least once a day. So asking three questions. Number one, which I never, ever, ever do, which I don't know why. Number one, asking them, when do you get paid? I don't ask that. I go straight to the, what can you sell? Um, well, it's pre-sell your apps. No, ask them, when do you get paid? Well, I don't have a job, but my husband does, and he gets paid on the 13th. Great. I will contact you on the 13th. Ask them when they get paid because you don't know where that money is coming from. It also could be from tax season. We have tax season coming up. So asking them, when do you get your taxes? Number two, what can you sell? And then number three, can you pre-sell four wraps? Do you know four people that want to use these products? Um, 
And then the next question is, if you're still talking in that conversation, is how much would you ideally like to make with it works? Are you, and if they tell you $300, 400, 500, 1,000, whatever it is, being so blunt straight to the point of, are you going to let $99 stop you from making blank a month? Delivering that message. Are you gonna, are you gonna stop yourself? Are you gonna let $99 stop yourself from making $500 a month? And then again, asking the three questions. You know, why do you wanna do this? What's the worst thing that can happen? What's the best thing that can have happen? Having them see that value in this journey because money is not an issue when people can see the value in it, okay? I don't know about you guys, but I've had people that are like, I can't afford it, I can't do it, I don't have the money, and then all of a sudden the next day they sign up. Like money went into their bank account overnight or in the next hour, 30 minutes, they're all of a sudden like, yeah, I can do it because they see the value in it. So make sure you're getting across to your potential, the value in joining your team, the value in joining It Works Global. Um, the value in having their why become, you know, it's their why that's forming into their success and letting them see that bigger picture. Um, having them see the why behind okay. that. Want to see me themselves? No? Okay. Um, let's see here. Number one, realize that you don't need to be making a lot of money for people to join you. You guys, you don't, you don't have to be some millionaire like Stephanie was talking about. You don't have to be a millionaire. You don't have to be an ambassador. You don't have to be a diamond. You don't have to be an emerald ruby. You could be a flat out two day in distributor and sign distributors. Okay. There's no certain level that you have to be at. It's all in your confidence and it's all in your attitude. Your attitude determines your success in this business. Okay evaluate yourself, evaluate your emotions, evaluate your mindset, evaluate your posts. Okay. People are watching you, especially if you're on here and you are a new distributor, people are watching your next move. And then those of you that have been in a while, a couple of years, they're waiting to see if you're going to keep going. They're waiting to see how long you're going to do this. Are you still excited? Are you still passionate? Are you still fired up? Are you still real and raw? People want to know that. They want to know your story. Um, so, and then showing people that consistency. I will tell you right now, if you do not take this business seriously and consistent, you will never, ever, ever go anywhere. Ever, ever. I don't care what level you're at. If you get to Diamond because you had 25 a million rock stars under you, awesome. But guess what? Those people got you there. And then new people are going to get you to that next level. And you have to decide that you're going to take this business seriously and be consistent and it'll work. Um, step two is kiss. Keep it super simple. Any conversation, any conversation, you do not want to drown your potential loyal customers or potential distributors with information. So always think about number two is kiss. Okay. Number one is realizing you don't need to make money. Number two is kiss. Number three is um, oh, my page. focus your post on that extra three to $500 a month. Okay. Always focusing your posts on the smaller, simpler, um, day to day expenses and that little extra income. Um, and then number four was the questions that we talked about. How much do you want to make? What's the worst that can happen? What's the best? Um, and then number five is starting with their why help someone figure out what their why is. For doing this and guess what they will never quit if you're constantly reminding them who is watching them who they're doing this for and if I had to tell my child that you know what Nixon mommy has to go back to work because she was too lazy to not put 30 minutes a day into her business and make this work you know what Nixon mommy has to go back to work and somebody else is gonna raise you because I decided that you weren't good enough can you imagine telling your child that no no I couldn't I probably just want to pay my bills because there's no way that I could look my child in the eye and say, you know what, Nixon, life's going to change now because I decided that you weren't good enough and I wasn't good enough. Right? So your why has got to be so strong. And if you don't know your why, I want you to figure it out because I know there's a lot of you on here that think sometimes, why do I even do this? Why am I still doing this? What's going to drive me and motivate me to go to that next level? You've got to figure that out. Um, so a couple things really quick before we finish up, I just have a couple more notes, um, that when you're looking for distributors, 
totally don't do what you're thinking. Uh, they're not going to want it. They don't even like this. They don't want to use the products or they don't want to make money or they're a successful doctor. Take that all out of spaghetti for dinner. Everything out of your head. Okay. Everything. Um, I still have lots of pots and pans to cook. And come in to the conversation of when you're sitting down to message a clean slate, just a clean slate. Who do I want on my team? Okay. I want people that are hungry. I want people that are, are passionate, that are confident, that are exciting, that bring value to people's lives, you know, that push me better to be a better person. So think about that, that when you sit down to message, you just clean slate. This is what I want. Um, get out of your head, get out of your head and just ask people, people need and want what you have. And it's up to you to deliver that message. Um, and then the next thing is realizing that it's not, you're not in it for you anymore. You're in it for them. You're helping them change their life. You're helping them to get healthy. You're helping them to get out of debt, make that extra little three to $500. You're helping them. So realize what that help that they need or want. Um, bottom line, you guys, if you're not signing distributors, you're not asking people. You're not. I mean, there's nothing else to it. You can sign loyal customers all day because you're asking, but you've got to do the exact same thing with distributors exact same thing you just got to ask um looking at your posts looking at your interaction you've just got to ask um let's see here and again the last thing was people join your team based upon feelings like i talked about you guys people are tired of being sick they are tired of being paycheck to paycheck they are tired of the unknown of how are they going to make it before that next pay period or they are tired of not being able to go on vacation they are sick and tired of listening to their boss or it's a freaking snow day with like three feet outside and they're still going to work how many people are seeing people bitch on facebook right now about having to go to work or driving this right Use that to your advantage. Use that. Utilize these snow days to your advantage. People want what you have. And even if they don't want to quit their J-O-B, that's okay. But it's up to you to deliver that message and say, hey, it's okay if you took a snow day because you're still getting paid from home. All right? Let them know what you have. Um, okay, that's all that I have for tonight. Does anybody have any other questions, feedback, advice on signing distributors that they want to add in? I would love to hear it. And you're all muted, so if you want to talk, make sure you unmute yourself. Was this helpful? Does anybody have anything that they're still kind of like, uh, go ahead, Tom. So, so I'm not, I'm not even going to say that. This was very helpful. Um, I needed this Zoom personally and something that I'm doing is definitely getting out of my comfort zone and asking more um, than I typically do. But I would say to remember, and you've already kind of hit on this, is be confident and be proud. And one thing that I, stop doing is I stop like begging people as bad as it sounds but I'm, like, I'm not going to talk people into joining me whether it's customers or distributors I had a girl message me saying that she was interested I messaged her back like oh you're interested yeah but does it do this I want to see reviews from people that aren't distributors and yada yada, yada. and I told her it's like I don't need to convince you you told me you were interested if you would like to try this it was fat fighters and I sent her the fat fighter demo she's like well is that a distributor that's doing that demo? I was like, yeah, but you can't fake the demo. And she was still upset about it. And I was like, you know what? If you don't want to try it, that's totally cool. And I moved on and she messaged me back. But I'm not going to convince people. And same with being a distributor. I've had conversations where like, well, but, okay, look, if you want to get out of your current situation, if you want to change your life, let me help you. If not, okay, cool. Like I get being scared and helping them through that fear. But if they're just going to be back and forth with you nonstop, you're not having to convince them. You're not having to beg them to be on your team. So be confident in the fact that, as broad as it sounds like, they need you more than you need them. So make this, you know, exciting and know that you have an option for them and you have, you know, a way out if they're in a bad situation and you want to help them. But you're not sitting there begging for people to be on your team. You want the people that want this. And know that you have an amazing company with amazing products. 
and don't be ashamed of that. I feel like because we're in network marketing and direct sales, it already is kind of looked down upon. And I know that when I start talking to certain people, even in my family, it's like this, like, oh God, you're doing that it works thing. And no, I'm selling it works and it's providing an income for my family. And being proud and excited about that versus ashamed or embarrassed or quiet about it is something that I've decided to do in 2017 not hiding what this company can do because this company is amazing and we all know that. So be proud of that and confident in that and just simply ask. Yeah. Um, something that stuck out to me that you said too, was like, don't hide behind this thing called this computer screen or this thing called a phone. Like be proud of what you do. And if you don't go out in public and you don't go out and blitz a whole lot, do a Facebook live. Do a Facebook Live. Do, you know, voice messages. Be proud and loud about what you do. And like, com or, com <laughs> I'm trying to say confident and taunting at the same time. Be confident and proud of who you are, of the company you're a part of, where you're at, what you want, and people are going to be drawn to that. Um, I wanted to say something real quick. Um, if you have to work that hard to convince someone to be on your team, even if you end up convincing them to join, you're going to be dragging them along the whole way and it's going to be more exhausting than it is beneficial. So I, at least said something before, like you need to kind of feel it out the person to see if they're even going to be good for it. Cause you don't want to just like ask everyone and try to convince them and, and exhaust yourself and try to get all these people on your team and come on, join, 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 join when you don't even know if they're going to be, if it's even for them, if they're going to be a good worker, because then you're going to be exhausted making sure that they're working and your business is going to suffer. And I only speak from experience because that's exactly what I did in the beginning. I just tried to get everyone to join, 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 join. And oh, I'm going to convince them. I'm going to convince them. No, I know how to convince them. I'm going to get them to join. And sometimes I did. And I felt like, okay, cool. I got them on my team, but then they didn't do anything. And I was constantly dragging them like, come on, what are you doing with your business? Um, why aren't like, why aren't you working or whatever? And it was just more exhausting and my own business suffered. So if you have to work that hard to convince someone, it's probably not even worth it. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Taylor, go ahead. Um, I cannot agree with that anymore, Natalie. That is so true. And I'm glad that you brought that up because, um, this wasn't what I was going to give my advice or whatever on, but I think we all go through that and we all are so excited, especially when we sign up and we want, you know, so many people on our team, we want to promote so bad, but you will find out that <clears throat> when you, this is, so this is what I do is I always ask people questions. Um, or at least I try to, some people are really easy. I know Sean, he's on here and he was so easy to sign up, but, um, cause he actually came to me and some people will come to you because they know that they want to do this, but, for me, when I'm reaching out to people and I, if it's someone that I think that will be good at this business, I try to ask them a lot of more questions because when you ask them questions, you're kind of picking their brain to see, you know, where they're at in life, what they would want to get out of this and if any goals that they have or whatever. And sometimes you find out that some people are not people that you want on your team. Like I've had so many people and I know a lot of people on here have had so many people, but I mean, we talk to people all the time and you'll have people where you'll probably think like, oh my gosh, they're just like, I know I do. I think that like some people are just not worth my time and they're not people that I would want on my team just, just, just because they're already giving excuses or whatever. But um, the one thing that I was going to say is that has helped me a lot is, and I feel like signing distributors has always been my strong point. But I think the biggest thing has always been confidence for me and also just having, you know, the belief within the company that has helped my confidence. Um, but the other thing I was going to say too, Frick, I forgot what I was going to say, um, is, what do I do? Shoot, I totally lost my train of thought. Um, Oh my gosh, never mind. I totally lost my train of thought. I cannot remember what I was going to say. <laughs> oh, wait, God, ah, um, having confidence and then, um, getting to know them, asking questions. Oh, and being understanding. That's the biggest thing that has helped me is being understanding, like understanding where they're coming from, understanding, you know, just 
I don't know. I feel like I've had a lot of people come to me and they have like, they tell me like their whole entire life story. And I think that that's the one thing that has really helped me is that I take the time to talk to these people and show them that I care about what they're going through and that I really want to help them. So that's the one thing that has really helped me is just, um, being really understanding. Sorry, I totally lost my train of thought, but I'm glad I got that back. No, that was perfect. And I'm actually going to have you answer this question. Um, because you are good at signing distributors. So when somebody um, has a hard time responding, okay, so somebody has a hard time responding when someone answers no thanks or I'm not interested, how do you respond back? Um, a lot of the time for me, because I do get that a lot, a lot of people will say no thanks. Um, and I think for me, what I really do is just, I say, okay, you know, if you ever change your mind, like let me know. And then during that time, I'm just trying to be their friend and just remind them that I'm there because whenever they see my name, they're going to think of it works. People know me by it works. Like people know that I do it works. And that's basically the only thing that I do. Like people relate me to it works. And so, um, during that time when people say no thanks, I always just say, okay, you know, I'm really nice to them back. And I really just am like, okay, you know, no big deal. If you ever change your mind, like, let me know. I would still love to help you. Um, and I kind of just keep it at that. And then during that time, I'm constantly like showing them like love on their Facebook and things so that they don't forget about me. And a lot of the time I've had people come back to me and be like, okay, I've been watching you. I see you doing this you and your team are kicking butt, like what, how are you doing this? And a lot of the time people do come back. So just don't stop, you know, being there, even if people say no thanks. I love that. Thank you for sharing. Um, does anybody have anything else that they want to add or ask? I want to add one more thing since Taylor kind of brought this up with um, people watching you and saying things like, oh, my team is, Kick, your team looks like it's kicking butt. You need to make sure that your Facebook is encouraging. If you're sitting there posting that you're so depressed and life's so negative and this sucks and you know whatever it is, people aren't going to be drawn to that. People want to want to see that you're fun or that you're positive or that your team is working or that you're using the product or that you are seeing success in this. And even like she said, even if you know it's like my new girl, Amber, she joined like five days before the month ended, but she still got a paycheck and she posted that, you know, like I had only worked this business for five days and I still made a paycheck, you know, like that's what people want to see. Like, holy cow, you can be doing this for that small amount of time and you still got paid, you know, like those little things. I don't care if it was $5, $20, $10. My first paycheck I think was $21. So you know, it doesn't matter. It's still the fact that they want to say that you're doing that, that your team is fun. You know, I have a girl that I'm talking to right now that posted that she wishes that she just had more friends. And, you know, we have that option. This team is all about that. This team is the most caring, outgoing friendship people ever. And, you know, sometimes that's all people want is they just want to be around some friends, you know? And so if your your Facebook is presentable, and I'm not saying it has to be robot. I'm not saying you can't be you. I'm not saying you can't still have a bad day. That's, you know, totally normal but make sure that you're not posting negative 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 you know even if you are having a bad day you there's something positive about it and you can spend it to post that trust me because I do that every freaking day so you know you just have to make sure that you're doing that because people are not going to join you if you're sitting there talking about how horrible your life is absolutely go ahead Leslie I just want to go back a little bit to what Natalie was saying because at first I was just trying to sign anybody and everybody to grow my team and I made a few errors. But one thing that I now am stepping back and looking at is to something that when, you know, I, w I was the, you know, store manager at Chico's and when we'd have a customer in and, and you know, my, my gals would come to me and say, oh, you know, Susie Q, she really wants to come and work here. You know, we need somebody you should hire. And I would say, really, you want to work with this person every day? She's a pain in the ass as a customer. We can hardly wait for her to leave the store. Why would you want to work with her every day? And you kind of have to use that same thing, you know, when you're wanting to sign people. Because if you sign people that are going to drain your energy and 
you're not going to have the energy for your people that are your movers and your shakers because you're so worn out and exhausted by dealing with those people that just suck the life right out of you that it's, it's not worth the effort. I'm so glad you guys brought that up because I can attest to that. And I know a lot of other people in this zoom can, um, business is not fun when you're working with people who are not fun or people who don't want this or they're not hungry or they're, they're exhausting. And let me tell you, there's been so many days you guys where that's ruined my whole day. Now, how stupid is that? I let somebody else's conversation and somebody else's pity of excuses and I'm tired. I don't want to do this ruin my day because I'm like, why don't you see this? Why don't you get this? Why don't you see your potential? So I'm so glad you guys brought that up because that is something that can absolutely damage and destroy your business when you let those people in. Um, go ahead, Brandy. You said to meet yourself. Yeah. Can you hear me? I have my headset on. Um, my question is, cause I've had a couple of, a lot of these lately and, um, for me, it's kind of a big deal not to like get caught up on those people like you guys are all saying and stuff, but for the people that have the experience, how do you separate that from like, say me, like for instance, like even just for you to know how, like how much I've changed and how much I've grown positive, positively, um, in my mind frame and all that jazz, you know, like it's such a struggle for me to figure out when do you give up? Cause I know there's some really good people that mean well you know, and I know what this business can do for them, but it's so hard not to exert that extra energy on them if they're not going to want it for themselves, I guess. Does that make sense? Yeah. Anybody want to answer that? When do you just finally give up? Anybody? I wouldn't say that I ever actually give up. Um, I would say... Some of the people, if you know them, um, I would straight up be honest with them and say, look, like this is how much it's changed me and what it's done for me mentally, let alone like financially or product wise. Um, and I know that this could really help you. I know that you need something like this in your life and I know that you need this. So when are you going to decide to do it? And I love that quote. Are you really going to let $99 keep you from making whatever that goal is or from having that positivity in your life. Are you really going to let that, that stop you? Um, now I will say that I don't follow up as often with certain people after constantly having an excuse or a negative response. Um, I will never not follow up with them, but they may go to my once a month follow-up versus my every week follow-up at some point. Um, yeah, I just keep them on my list, interact on their Facebook. And honestly, I've tried a more blunt approach to my lead list lately of just like, hey, are you going to do this or not? Because you've told me you want to do this. You've told me you wanted to join. So are we going to do this? I'm going to actually gotten conversations back after not having conversations. So I think at some point in building a relationship and interacting and seeing how, they're, how they are on Facebook and you really still thinking that they'd be great at this or that they could benefit in some way, um, I have just said, look, like, this is what I'm seeing. This is what I know it's done for me. This is what I know that you need in your life. And are we going to get you going on this? Are you willing to, to take a chance and do this and trust me and trust this process or not and see where it leads? But I don't ever take them out. I just eventually like slow down my follow up so that I'm not exhausting my energy on them. I'm the same way. I don't ever stop following up, but I do it like once a month. And then if they don't, get anywhere with a DT, Brandy, I'll offer them the little customer side first. So I'm like, okay, I get it. You're not ready to join the business, but what do you say we get started um, on the product that you're really wanting to do? Why don't we say we try that out? And then if you change your mind to be a distributor, you change your mind. Otherwise, at least you're getting started to have your hands on the products. And then typically we'll send them as a will. So. so one thing I was going to say um, that I learned recently, and I don't know if I've really done this before, but um, if I have, then I don't remember, but just re learned recently was if they came to you, remind them why they came to you. Um, you know, they remind them that they were excited to, you know, start the business or they were excited about whatever and just remind them about 
you know, anything that you guys have talked about, because I think that when people go back and they think about it, they're like, oh crap, especially if it's a um, distributor and you've been talking to them about, you know, money and stuff, ask them how long that they've been struggling. And that was one thing that I've learned recently. And I've asked that question before is, you know, how long have things been this bad? And that has been one thing that has kind of been like a game changer and people are like, Oh crap. Like I've been struggling for two years. Like I'm tired of struggling. You know what I mean? Like I think if you just remind people of these things and remind them of what you've talked about, but if you get the vibe that they're not ready to do this, then that's, I do the same thing that Ali does is just direct them to being a loyal customer and ask them if they want to, um, get on the products. Uh, Christina said, how often do you follow up with people who kind of want to join, but just aren't a hundred percent convinced? Um, I, uh, I don't know. I do. I mean, I'll tell you what I do. You guys can share you guys do, but I will always, I will more so draw my posts towards what's holding them back so that they're constantly seeing me continuing to post and do things that sort of thing, but hoping that that will clear the air there. But I will also ask Christina, I will say, okay, Christina, you've told me you wanted to join. You told me you wanted to do this. Where do you stand on a scale from one to 10? 10 being you want to join, one being you're all out. And if you're like five, I will say, okay, Christina, how can I get you from a five to a 10? What's it going to take? And I will get to the bottom of it usually. I know I just started laughing because I just read that. I was like, oh my God. Freddie's probably over there swaying in a rocking chair. Oh God, too funny. Um, anybody else have anything that they want to add as far as contributors? Any other questions? Not gonna lie, I this is an awesome Zoom, but I missed our face to face time, guys. This little snow apocalypse or whatever, I better stop. I'm over it. I love the snow, but now I'm like. Okay, this is a little much. When you can't drive, you can't like get out of your house and your insanity is like gone. And my child isn't gonna go to preschool. Come on. I feel like my house is about to be covered with snow completely. I have to freaking get on a plane and go somewhere. <laughs> um, California girl's about to make you guys jealous. I wore flip flops today. <laughs> <laughs> um, I saw that it was like 60 degrees in Las Vegas. I'm like, ugh. So annoying. <laughs> the sun was out today. <laughs> um, yeah, I, mean, I love Myrtle Beach. Oh my gosh. Yeah, Sean's all the way over there. Jealousy at its finest. <laughs> um, the one thing I wanted to add really quick is um, if your posts don't, if you feel like you're not being effective when it comes to your posts about, you know, distributors, um, Try sharing other people's success stories. I know that when I have shared um, the hashtag cotton adventure post that Pam does, I've gotten a lot of potentials from those. Um, and I know a couple of people on my team have gotten quite a few potentials and actual signed distributors from those two. So if you don't feel like you have a story, which every single one of you guys do, like you guys do have a story. Um, but if you feel like you can't figure yours out, then, you know, share other people's success because, um, I know Leslie shaking my head at you. Um, but, um, you know, share other people's success, or if you feel like you're tired of sharing your story or whatever, share other people's that way, you know, people can relate to other people, but they're going to sign with you because they know you. I agree. I agree. <laughs> Tammy, what Jake has clothes on? <laughs> oh my God, too funny. Well, this has been fun. I'm so glad that we did this tonight. Um, I'm thankful that each one of you guys have plugged in and tuned in. I love Stephanie. She's so much fun. Uh, we've, we've known each other for like three days, and I feel like I've known, known her for like a year already. So. It was fun having her on. Um, I will post the recording so you guys can send it out to your teams. Again, thank you, thank you for being on. Um, have a great, what day is it? I don't even know. Tuesday. Um, and I will talk to you guys later.